Just the short version, Cody, because you've probably mm -hmm. done this a whole bunch of times, but ah. uh, just for the people listening who won't know everything, yeah, can you just give us uh, how you went from Co Cody, the the guy likes guns, to Cody, <laughs> the printed gun guy? Like, how how did that happen? What yeah. what what was that transition? Yeah, I, I can say in a few words. I, I think I was never the guy who liked guns, and that was probably the best. Oh, really? That was the best thing. Yeah, I mean, I come from the South and everything. I yeah. certainly like the revolutionary ideology of, you know, the Minuteman and the things we mm -hmm. talked about earlier. I like guns in that respect. Wow, the Second Amendment and its radical possibility. But um, I was inspired while I was in law school. It was 2011. I watched one man single-handedly defeat the payments industry, you know, the international set of, of world governments and uh, his name was Julian Assange, right? This was Cablegate, and I was like, oh my God. I didn't know what he believed. I didn't know what he was about. But I was like, if if there's a future for the political on the internet, this it's things like this. How could we do WikiLeaks for guns? That's the advent of my company, WikiLeaks for guns. At the time, was the technology there? Sure. Yeah. What I recognize is like it was already there. You know, we, we went to cncguns.com. We discovered, wow, there's all these blueprints already on the internet. Not necessarily 3D printed gun blueprints, but... But 3D printers themselves had just got to this moment. MakerBot was taking off. RepRap in the UK had a big, mm. you know, reputation. Anderson had just published his book on the, the new industrial revolution. And I was like, you know what? I don't think people were ready for that conversation. Guns are downloadable, right? It, it, it spills out this new kind of grammar. And uh, just like Jessica was saying, imagine a power which gives itself the right to regulate downloadable guns. But can a power like that actually exist? And what if we provoked it to try to exist? And sometimes they, this power doesn't even understand what it's dealing with. When you actually, if you go and see the little teaser that's going to be on my website, we have a senator that says you can go to Instagram and get an Instagun. I mean, it's an amazing quote. Like, what is he even talking about? It's cute. It's cute. <laughs> like, the, the, like, this entire time, everyone's, everyone's been trying to understand and capture and control a thing that they can't even express or understand well, I'll verbally. Be, I'll be more cynical though. Like, yeah. you know, like in 2018 is when we first, we were just a couple years ahead of this COVID lockdown and everything. And I, I mean the digital lockdown, not the physical ones. We've been early to deplatforming. And so when a senator says, you can go to Instagram and get an Instagun, he's telling, hey, Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. right? Like you're not, no one's going to be posting about this on your platform. Like the, these politicians see these platforms as, extensions of the progressive new middle class agenda, you know, they prefer to, like Assange had written in 2014 and after, they prefer to exercise their power, not through state organs now, but Google, Facebook, you know, that's how they see the, it's effective. It's their privilege to regulate the internet. So I would say maybe there's more of that in there than, than you might think. He's not sure. just being dumb, um. although he's also being dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is, there, over the last two years, we've seen this massive increase in power. Yeah to censor speech across uh, social platforms, Google, Facebook, et cetera, but also financial censorship. Yeah. Uh, we, we saw it a small amount with the Canadian truckers trying to raise funds, mm -hmm. and now we've seen an entire country be deplatformed yeah. off every major payment rail. So I think it's what's being, and what you want is other people to realize that these things aren't good. Like people are supporting it, not everyone. But realize that these forms of censorship aren't good because it shows how much power yeah. a small group of people can have if they don't like what you're saying. It, sure. At least COVID has exposed a, a wide group of people to this and accusations of terrorism and thought crime. And, you know, it used to be I have to explain to my grandma, you know, why do they call you a terrorist, Cody, with the gun thing? Right. And that's, that's harder. The most but, dangerous man in the world. Right. But now that kind of everyone has been called a terrorist at one point or another for saying something about the vax, do you know what I mean? It's like, all right, yeah, I think we all kind of see where this is going. <laughs> in 2013 or 2014, Cody was like, so now this, everyone's going to be called an ist, you know? Yeah. Or, or in nine years, it's going to all be happening. And it actually and did. Look at Assange. Just, Assange was your canary, right? Even before Snowden, he's like, look, he gets completely deplatformed. He, he gets kicked off of Visa, MasterCard, right? Hey, Amex, everything. Yeah. You know, the only reason I did Bitcoin is because I saw Sandra's doing Bitcoin. And I had an article coming out. This is the summer of 2012. It was going to be my first article, I think, at Forbes magazine. Oh, you know, Wiki Weapon is what we called it before we had a name for what we were doing. And I had a PayPal button on my website. And I think this was purely coincidental. But the day before, the night before the piece ran, I lost my PayPal account. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? This thing's going to run tomorrow. I don't have time to set anything else up. I put a Bitcoin button up on my website. And that was the greatest decision I had ever made. 
Is 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 there a um, a real symbiotic relationship between the gun work that you've done, the printed guns, and Bitcoin? Well, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I don't know if if you want me to really jump in. Yeah, uh, I, you know, Amir Taki saw that I was doing Wiki Weapon September of 2012, and he was like, "Hey, I'm doing a one of the first Bitcoin conferences in Europe." Is he the guy who went off to fly ISIS? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so there's your gun relationship. <laughs> but Amir saw it before I did. Yeah. He was like, look, I'm doing a Bitcoin conference. What you're doing is exactly like what this is about. And he explained Satoshi to me and a, and a lot of things that I hadn't really taken the time. To, maybe I'd heard about Bitcoin in college. I didn't take it seriously. But I, like I said, I was starting to accept it because uh, it was the only Bitcoin uh, that I'd had. So the Bitcoin forums found me. There, therefore, Amir found me. He invited me to a Bitcoin conference. I met a lot of the earliest people in Bitcoin you know, that year at that conference and, and thereafter had a pretty intimate relationship with the first you know, big people in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Core. 